Well, good morning. And that was truly a lovely way to begin our time of worship together. Um, Good to see you all. Um, Welcome to worship here at Genesis United Methodist Church. My name is Paul Massengill, and along with my wife, Amber, we co-pastor here at Genesis. And as always, it's a blessing and privilege to welcome people to worship. I want to extend a special welcome to those who are joining us online or maybe watching this later. And we hope that this is a good time um, for you as well. Um, Several announcements as we get started. Um, First, if you are newer among us would love to connect with you more personally, you can email us at genesis at genesisumc.com and we would love to follow up with you. Um, Also, um, just a friendly reminder, there are offering baskets in the back. You you can also give online. We we have been doing that for a while now. Um, For children who are among us, always good to have young people. I just want to remind you we have a cry room. We have a nursery for those four and under. We have worship bags if you'd like to stay in here during service or you can go out during the the first song to Children's Church. Um, A few other announcements to share with you about upcoming events. Um, Just a friendly reminder that we are playing pickleball on Sunday afternoons, 4 o'clock. This is open to anyone who would like to come. You're welcome to invite and bring friends. Um, Also, there is a sign-up sheet outside the door this morning for the fellowship lunch on Thursday the 25th. Um, we do this the last, or the, is it the last or the fourth Thursday? I, I get confused, but, but it's, it's, next, it's next week, the 25th, fellowship lunch, so encourage you to do that. Um, and also, the women's retreat is Saturday, um, April 27th. Um, we're excited about this, and we want to encourage you, um, ladies, to sign up. Um, We've done this the last couple of years and it's been a really good day of encouragement and fellowship and learning and so just encourage you um, to be part of that. Again, there's information outside the sanctuary um, uh, for that will provide some details and just encourage you to, to consider coming and being part of that. All right, I think that's all of our announcements this morning, so I'm going to invite um, Dick if he'd come and lead us in our call to worship. Thank you, and good morning. Please stand as you are able to join with me in our call to worship from the words of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley full of bones. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? Then he said, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. My people will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live. May we hear the word of the Lord. May we breathe the Holy Spirit. May these bones live again. And now please remain standing for our opening song.
invite you while you are standing to welcome those around you to worship. Well, one, wonderful. If you could make your way back to your seat, and I think all of our children just n now headed out uh, for Children's Church. Um, as we come together to worship the Lord this morning, uh, we will uh, pray for one another and pray for the world. Um, I'm sure as of yesterday and this morning, uh, you were watching the headlines, and we want to be praying for the Middle East. I know we pray um, every Sunday and for that situation, um, but want to keep that uh, close to our hearts in prayer today. Um, if you have a prayer request uh, for yourself or for a loved one or a situation that, that you would like the church to be praying for, I encourage you to email us at prayers at genesisumc.com. Uh, we also have prayer cards if you're here in person. Um, but if you are worshiping with us online or something happens during the week, please feel free uh, to email us with that. After each one of my prayers, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and if you'll please reply by saying, hear our prayers. Let us pray. O oh, good and gracious God, we give you thanks uh, for this day um, and all that your grace has in store for us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, who is here with us, moving in this place for the word uh, that we have heard, for the music we've enjoyed, as well as the fellowship. We thank you, O oh God, for your Son, Jesus, uh, our resurrected Savior, who we continue to worship throughout this Easter season. We thank you, O oh God, for being with us this week, for whatever we have gone through. Lord, whatever those circumstances are, we are here now in this place or gathered uh, together in the Holy Spirit, um, even when we're um, across the miles. And we thank you, O oh God, uh, for this time here and now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Our hearts are heavy, O oh God, as, as we know yours is, to see your children, your people fighting. God, and we just want to lift up especially to you the Middle East for uh, the leaders, God, and decisions that are going to be made. And we pray especially for those who are on the ground, those who are, who are scared and afraid, those who um, are grieving. Lord, for those um, who are hurting physically, Lord, we pray uh, that you would lead your people in peace. God, that we would learn, as your scripture says, as a prophet in the Old Testament, for the lion and the lamb to lie down together. And we pray, O oh God, uh, that even as we wait for your son to return, that we would be willing to work for peace on earth and that your kingdom would come. We pray this not only for the Middle East, um, but for all places around the world where there is conflict and violence for our own uh, cities and, 
and communities in the United States, for our own neighborhoods, our schools. God, that we would be peacemakers, just as your son has called us to be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray, O oh God, today for those who are the closest to us that we, um, that we do see on a regular basis, that we work with, that we go to school with, that we live near. We pray for our children and our grandchildren. We know, O oh God, that they have places in their lives of conflict, of trauma even. And we pray in ways that we can be mentors to them and that you would give us words of wisdom to help them know how to make their way in this world that is so daunting and scary at times. We pray, O oh God, uh, the same prayer that your son Jesus prayed for the disciples, not that you would take um, our loved ones uh, or children and grandchildren from the world, Lord, to avoid trouble, but that you would uh, show us how to live in the world and just not be of it. Lord, we pray for your peace to reign in our hearts wherever there is anxiety and fear and depression. And we pray for those ministries here um, to youth and young people, uh, to those struggling with depression. Um, Lord, that you would use those um, as well as, as us and to help those who are in need today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. God, we pray for those who are sick today and those who are, uh, need your healing touch. We pray for caregivers among us as well. God, just for your strength, for your Holy Spirit to bring healing, that you would mend us from the inside out, oh God. Uh, we pray, Lord, for all of those um, to, today who grieve, uh, and we pray for those who need your hope that they would hear the word of the Lord and their hearts would be gladdened. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And now, O oh God, we gather these prayers together in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, for all that we have spoken and all that is left unspoken. God, we, you know our needs. And so we close by saying the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Please join me in the prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us this day. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the 20th chapter of John. And if you've ever maybe doubted a little all of the things you read in the Bible and whether or not Jesus really died on the cross and then rose from the grave, hear these words from John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he said he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Until I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here in my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Jesus answered, My Lord, my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Dick, and thank you to the choir. Um, Robin, that was a wonderfully, um, wonderful song, well chosen for what we're going to be talking about. Um, as we start a new series here after Easter, um, I don't know if any of you recognize this sort of logo ripoff we have here. <laughs> Hope we don't get in trouble for it. Uh, this is from the website Rotten Tomatoes uh, that reviews uh, movies and TV shows. Um, and when you get a really good one uh, that, that is creative and interesting, it's called, it's certified fresh, right? And so we're talking about new life in Christ and we are going to be talking about um, how we as people, as individuals, but also as the church, how we can find new life. And today we're talking uh, primarily about the spirit, right? And finding a new spirit, a new energy. Uh, our text here um, brings us uh, to, to the resurrection stories uh, that, uh, of Jesus after he was raised from the dead. Um, but I want you to just imagine again for a moment uh, what it would have been like for them. And, and Easter was two weeks ago. It seems like a long time ago, doesn't it? Uh, Holy Week and Lent, that all just seems forever ago. <laughs> uh, so I want to remind you what they, they might have been feeling. Jesus was dead, right? Their mission was dead. Their spirits in them probably felt dead. All right, this probably summed up ab about where they were at the end of Holy Week when Jesus was crucified. 
Uh, and then um, on the third day, he rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Um, praise God. And we, we celebrated Easter. Uh, and, and Jesus appeared. I love the resurrection stories in the Gospel of John. Jesus appears. He appears to Mary. She thinks he's the gardener. Um, and he calls her by name. And rec he rec she recognizes him. And, 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 and we start to have these resurrection appearances of Jesus. And the word starts to get around. But remember, they're still thinking, uh, what, a, what a horrible, traumatic experience. Jesus is dead. The mission is dead. Their spirits were just dead, withered inside of them. This may be something uh, that you know a little bit about. Um, kind of feeling dead inside, feeling empty, feeling like you're sort of withering on the vine, so to speak. Um, maybe who felt this way um, after some, some life experience, some changes of maybe even personal crisis, like after a divorce. Maybe you were left feeling like there was nothing, right? Um, or after a loved one dies. We talked on Easter about how communities can feel that way after a natural disaster. Remember we talked about um, uh, Paradise, California and the wildfires that went through and devastated that town, how nothing was left. Uh, this is something we know about um, coming from Florida um, where hurricanes hit, where we had served, um, where I was the pastor in Miami, uh, was close to Homestead and what they called Ground Zero after Hurricane Andrew in 1992, uh, the third largest, strongest that is, uh, hurricane to hit the United States in history. Everything was gone. Uh, we saw pictures. We even had to see a video when we got there on the first day. Like they had literally like a VHS tape video for us to watch. Um, there were no trees. There was no wildlife. There was no electricity. There was no water supply. Everything was gone. And 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 we as a community, as a nation, continue to experience traumatic experiences. Um, where we, we can call this actually sometimes complex dra dra trauma, where we go through things together and we think, how is anything going to ever be the same again, right? Uh, the COVID crisis followed by um, all of the high-profile racial violence followed by the volatile election, Right? I mean, you know all of these feelings, right? You bring it up and, and, and it feels almost like we're living it, like I don't want to live that again. Like I'm so, because it really does feel like nothing is going to be the same. Sometimes just on a personal level, we feel this way. Um, what if you're burned out? What if you're a, a new mom or a caregiver, right? an overworked employee, and, and you think, I have zero energy. There is no way I can get up this morning and do this, right? We have all been in those places as individuals, um, as, as a communities, as a church, where we think, like, this is it. I don't know how we're going to go on from here, Right? And this is exactly the situation uh, that Jesus finds the disciples in. Um, it's the evening of the resurrection, right? So they were still in this the kind of like this place of, of darkness. Of, of, they might have started hearing the word of, of that Jesus was alive, but it wasn't just Thomas who needed to see. Uh, the rest of them hadn't seen either. They were burned out, exhausted with grief. They had endured incredibly traumatic events, perhaps felt like their lives were over and nothing was left. What's more is they were afraid for their lives. They literally says they were hiding in a locked room. Hiding in a locked room, maybe avoiding all of this other stuff. That's probably what I would be doing. Um, but also it felt safe um, from being targeted um, by 
the people who killed Jesus. And it is into that moment of, of weariness and darkness and fear and anxiety that Jesus appears to them. And he shows them his hands and his side to assure them he is real. He is alive. He's not a ghost. He is with them. And it says that they rejoiced. I imagine their adrenaline kicked in uh, to all of a sudden see Jesus there, right? Um, and to wonder what's going on. We don't care because Jesus is with us. All the questions. We know we see Thomas with those questions as well. But what I want to talk about today is what Jesus says to them and what he does just in those first few verses that Dick read for us. Um, we're not really going to be talking about Thomas and his doubts and his questions. That's, a, that's another sermon for another day. But in those first few verses, the very first thing that Jesus wants to do for them is restore their spirits. Jesus sees their fear and anxiety. Jesus sees um, how weary they are, how grief-laden they are, and heavy they, they, they are feeling. And Jesus wants to restore their spirits, to give them new life. So he greets them and he says, peace be with you. And then he does two things, friends. He reminds them of their mission, and he breathes the Holy Spirit on them. He says to them these words, he says, As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Now, he had just shown them the scars, the holes on his hand and in his side. <laughs> so I'm not sure if this is really going to be the pep talk that, they, <laughs> that they're excited about. Because if they are being sent like Jesus, what could this mean for them? But Jesus does know something, um, something more. That this, in fact is the perfect time. This is almost that locker room pep talk, right? That they need to go back out there again. And being reminded of the mission is so important. When you and I feel burned out, um, when we feel kind of dead and lifeless inside, as whether you are a mom, and I'm looking over here, at our sweet mom and her baby. And you're like, I just don't know if I can, I can change another smelly diaper or stay up another night. That you, that you remember what a joy and blessing it is to be a parent, to be a new mom or a new dad. That to be reminded of that mission, of the, your calling, of your purpose is so important. It is not a little thing. In fact, it can make all the difference in the world. I have a video I want to show you. Um, this is from a man uh, kind of known as a, as a Christian comedian um, and a motivational speaker named Michael Jr. And this video is not about Jesus or the disciples or the resurrection, but it is about finding fresh energy fresh energy for what lies ahead. Uh, so we're going to watch this now. How do I know? A lot of people, when they think of the phrase, how do I know, they always want to put the what behind it. How do I know what I'm supposed to do? The, the question that you really should ask is, how do I know why I'm here? Because when you know your why, your what becomes more clear and more impactful. If you know, like for instance, um, people know that I do comedy, but that's what I do. My why is to inspire people to walk in purpose. So I can do comedy, I can write books, 
I can be in a movie because all of it is motivated by my why. In fact, I have a new, uh, a new web series out called Michael Jr. Break Time. Uh, we probably just did the sixth episode. It's on YouTube. So every single Wednesday at 3 o'clock, we drop a new episode on YouTube of Michael Jr. Break Time. What it is, is it's me. I travel around the country, and I do stand-up comedy, in case you didn't know. And in the middle of my comedy set sometime, I'll stop and just talk to my audience. And we've been filming this, and it's, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. So we're in Winston-Salem. I'm going to show you a clip from Winston-Salem. And I'm just talking to this guy in the audience, and he tells me that he's a, uh, a musical instructor at a school. So I was like, all right, you're a musical instructor. You know, can you sing? Let me hear you sing a song. So this is what happened at the last episode of Michael Jr.'s Break Time. Check it. So you're a musical director. Cool. Yes, sir. All right, so um, let, me get a couple, let me get a couple bars of, like, uh, Amazing Grace. Can you do the first part of that? Let me, go ahead. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Wow. That brought could sing. You know what I'm saying? All right, all right. Um, now, once you give me the version, is if uh, your uncle just got out of jail, you got shot in the back when you was a kid. I'm just saying, let me see the hood version real quick. If you know which version I'm talking about, just see if that exists. Let me see what you got. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that says. Here's what I want you to catch. The first time I asked him to sing, he knew what he was doing. The second time, he knew why he was doing it. When you know your why, your what becomes more impactful because you're walking towards or in your purpose. All right. I know, you liked that one too, right? Yeah. Um, so fresh, fresh energy. So the first time that Michael Jr. Uh, told him to sing, how was it? I mean, you know, it was nice. It was much better than I could have sang Amazing Grace. Um, but it was kind of rote, wasn't it? Yeah, he was just kind of saying the, saying the words, hitting the right notes. Yeah. Okay, second time, Michael Jr. said to him, all right, now, now, he said this is only like a black man can say to another black man. You know, think, think, think about all you've been through and all your people have been through, right? Um, think about the plight of your loved ones, injustice, pain, suffering, things like that. And now sing it. And how did it sound? Amazing, right? With part in the pun, it was amazing grace. I mean, just blew our minds, blew our socks off. Right? People stood up, people were clapping, you were clapping. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, they, it just made all the difference in the world for that musical instructor um, to be reminded of, of the why, of why he sings, right? And uh, there is a reason why we call it uh, gospel music. Um, is because uh, that is why we sing, is, is the good news of the gospel, 
right? That Jesus Christ uh, loved the world and loved you and me so much that he was willing to die for us and that we have been raised to new life in him. And this new life is available for all people of all um, ages and races um, throughout the world and time. That's the gospel. And, and he got in touch with that gospel music that he seemed to know about in his heart. Um, that was uh, a why that was obvious for that man of how he could have that kind of fresh energy. Well, Jesus appears to the disciples in this locked room and and I don't think that they could even begin to sound like that inst music instructor, that music teacher, um, even as good as he did. They probably would have said, if asked to sing Amazing Grace, they probably would have been like, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. You know, like they had nothing left, nothing left in them. But Jesus reminds them, so I have been sent... By the Father, so I am sending you. And you may not remember this, but Jesus lays out his why, his purpose in Luke chapter 4 at the temple when he begins his public ministry. And he quotes the prophet Isaiah and he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This was Jesus' why. What he did in his whole ministry, why he went to the cross, why God rose, raised him from the grave, and why he was sending his Holy Spirit. This was the why right there in Luke chapter 4. And he said, this is my why, why I was sent, and it's why I am sending you. So that you now can preach the good news to the poor, so that you can proclaim freedom for the prisoners, so that you can recover sight for the blind, to release the, the oppressed so that you can proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That is your why, Jesus says to them. And so, of course, he has to do what comes next, which is to breathe the Holy Spirit in them. Because the only way they can go the way Jesus did is if they have the Holy Spirit Remember, Jesus said the Holy Spirit was upon him. And when he was baptized uh, in the Jordan River, uh, a dove, like the Spirit, came down upon him. The Holy Spirit was with Jesus. And then the Holy Spirit must be with the disciples if they were going to go in his name. And so we need the Holy Spirit so that you and I can fulfill our purpose, our why. So that we can go from being dead inside to being alive again. So we go from rote religious words that we kind of say over and over again to soulful songs that just kind of come from deep within us. We need the Holy Spirit to, to help us to go from from just kind of doing the basic amount that's required of us, like just showing up, to inspiring others around us with what God can do. We need the Holy Spirit, friends, so that we can go from being timid, hiding in a locked room or building, to being brave out there, spreading the gospel. Jesus told his disciples not to forget their why. And he gave the Holy Spirit so the Spirit could remind them. You know, he said he would do this. 
He promised the Holy Spirit for this very reason. In John 14, 25, it says, Jesus says, all I've spoken while I was still with you, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you. So when we hear someone singing amazing grace like that man did, and we get goosebumps, or, or the choir singing their anthems, when we have those moments when we're like, this is why I'm doing it, your baby smiles and giggles at you, your, your teenager says, thank you. <laughs> You're like, whoa. Whoa. When you see that, that a word of encouragement has come to, to somebody, a stranger or a loved one, at just the right time, you're like, that's why I'm doing this. That's why. Friends, finding new life in Christ begins by receiving the Holy Spirit and being reminded of our why as Jesus followers. It's why it's, it's so important uh, for you, for any of us, to, to be a part of worship, uh, to hear the word of God spoken every week, to be in a, or in a Bible study and, and read it. It is being reminded of our why, of sharing our stories with one another, of how God is at work in our lives. This is what we do when we come together so that we can find new life in Christ. It is, I gotta tell you, it is the only way that we will find fresh energy for what lies ahead. The church that I pastored in Miami um, was, was not unlike Genesis in many ways. Um, certainly had um, a lot of ups and downs in its history, uh, seeking to try to connect with the community around it, which um, had been changing um, in many ways, uh, one decade to the next. It felt like it was always like, well, how do we need to adapt and evolve this decade, right? Um, the Hurricane Andrew that I mentioned was a hit in 1992. Um, and after that, the church um, actually became an UMCOR distribution site. And um, there, hundreds of people came from around the community to receive food and water. And it went on for months, months, my friends. But that work didn't exhaust them or leave them feeling dead. It made them feel alive again alive again. That sense of purpose from the Spirit, it gave them fresh energy for the next decade of ministry. And, and every season then, that church um, had to find that new life in Christ, that fresh energy, that fresh spirit. By the time that, that I left there in 2015, the, the full-time preschool had 80 children in it. We were also completing a merger with a neighboring United Methodist Church, and this was a strategy to help revitalize both those congregations and to reach the community. Does that sound familiar, talking about revitalizing and redeveloping a congregation? Since then, the church has hosted JFON offices, and they are birthing a new faith community from within the preschool through the messy church model. Friends, uh, Genesis isn't the only congregation uh, seeking fresh energy, a new life in Christ. Congregations, United Methodist ones in particular, but really across all kinds of denominations and faith traditions are seeking new life in Christ. And this is only possible in these two things that we have talked about. One, remembering our why. Why we do, why we sing and serve the way that we do. And by receiving the Holy Spirit who gives us fresh energy for the purpose we have been called for. 
Friends, this is the, the breath of the Holy Spirit that is the same gift that God offered Adam when he was nothing but dust and brought humanity to life. This is the same spirit that um, the prophet Elijah shared with a widow's son who was dead and brought him back to life. This is the same breath of God that, that was promised to Israel. So they would no longer be an army of dry bones, but a living, breathing nation. Friends, this is the same spirit that Jesus offers you and me today. It is the same Holy Spirit uh, that Jesus offers the church everywhere and Genesis today. And it is a gift that we do not earn or achieve because it is the grace of God. We merely receive it and give thanks to God for it. So I ask you today, in what ways do you perhaps feel dead and depleted? Can you even remember why you do what you do? When have you seen your neighbors or loved ones hiding with fear and anxiety? Well, I want you to hear the good news. The Holy Spirit is free for all those who ask. God wants to give us the gift of his spirit and bring us back to life again. I have noticed that in the, the scripture as the end of the chapter in, in John 20, that the very next week that they're still in a room together, right? It doesn't talk necessarily about locked doors, but they are in a room and the doors are shut and Jesus appears to them again. So never fear, Jesus will come to you as often as you need it to hear this invitation. Receive his Holy Spirit. Accept new life in Christ. Ask God to create in you life again. I want to end with the words uh, from the song we heard playing before the service started. It's one that you might be familiar with if you listen to the radio from Francesca Baticelli. She says, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And I just want you to repeat that with me. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. All right. Now that guy said, sounded better saying, singing Amazing Grace, okay? I want you to remember your why. Remember what Jesus means to you. Remember when you first saw him, when you first felt life coming back to you. Let's try it again. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. That was good. Do you think the Holy Spirit hurt us, though? Like, do you think the Holy Spirit really, you don't know? You don't think so, okay. Open wide the gates. Fling open your portals, as the Psalm says. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Amen. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you so much for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Maybe we were children or teenagers when we first felt your Spirit in us, and now, and now we feel like these, these bones are getting brittle. Maybe our spirits are getting cynical. Lord, we pray that you would refresh us. We pray that your Holy Spirit would descend upon us. Come rest on us. Let us feel your Holy Spirit move in this place. We pray that you would lead us to new life, O oh God. That you would bring us back from the dead. Raise us up from nothing. O oh God, so that you may be glorified. 
so that people would come to know of your love and your grace and of eternal life that you have to offer. We thank you, O oh God, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Now will you please stand and join me in sweet, sweet spirit and sing with purpose. As you leave, just want to remind you of the sign-up, um, especially for the women's retreat. Next Sunday is going to be the last Sunday. Please invite a friend or a neighbor, uh, a daughter or a granddaughter. We would love to have uh, you and many there for that. Uh, receive now this blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the blessing of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.